Yak went to the front in 15 laps. Now check this out. How much money was on the line? I think it was $1,000. Yeah. Well, here, I'm come, sure here comes Kyle. Th- yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, and I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that race pays 1000 to win. So um, Kyle's down the lead, and Arnie Case catches him and gave him a, a, a they say they gave him a little bump, a little shove going into turn one. And a little that, rub. Yep. Yep. And he got by Kyle. Okay. Now listen, he got by Kyle. And that was uh, really late, really late in the race. And then on lap 98, a caution. No way. Caution on lap 98. Oh, my gosh. And we're going to – basically what happened was Kyle – then a caution on lap 98 would see Kyle go to the high side and pass Case in the last – 50 feet down the front stretch to win. Case was second, Joey Tardio third, Andrew Langan fourth, and just in case, rounded out the top five. Now, what does that remind you of? Man, does it remind you of the Iron Giant? (laughs) The Iron Giant last year. You're right. Last Last year, year. yeah. With with obviously a different driver in, but the last 50 feet, they're saying Kyle edged by him. That's crazy. I mean, and when Kyle won the wall banger two years ago, when he passed Bryson James, last lap out of turn four and led about the last 50 feet. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just kind of what he does. Like, yeah. He just I don't know him. how he does that. that that's a that's a talent I would like to learn. Man, I'm telling you, the kid is he's one it of those It can't drivers. be taught. <laughs> it, it, I, and I think you're right. It's something that you cannot be taught. It's something you have to possess mentally. And here's yep. why I say that. I don't think you can be emotional in a race car. No, you shouldn't. We see the guys that, that, that can do really, really good when their game is on, but you rat them a little bit and they lose five, six spots and fade yep. back because they're angry. Yep. Kyle is almost robotic in a race car, does not have any type of emotion. And I think, you know, that reminds me of drivers like Bob Jeffrey, uh, reminds me of drivers like Darren Koffel. Um, you know, if Tony Whitney was a lot like that. Just no emotion in a race car. That you could see anyway. That you could see. Right, right. You know, now he might be, you know, he might be madder than, than an old wet bee, but he, uh, <laughs> he, you'll never know it, you know? Yeah. Whoa! Uh, that was right Sorry. in front of us. Yeah. Right in front of us. I almost took out a cheekbone. <laughs> <laughs> These cars are nuts. I can't, um, I can't help it when something goes like that in front, right in front of me. I'm, I'm like, whoa, whoa, check it out. We've got all kinds of cars on the track. That yeah, they're, they're really boring. coming out. If you guys hear that slamming sound in the back, that is not good. That's usually <laughs> yeah. a car tumbling or has belly flopped. And it's hit um, the outside wall. Oh, my gosh. This is nuts. But, you know, going back oh. to the to the Jim Thriftway 100 up there at Sunset, that is, that is a... a track that will test the best of drivers and this is why i say that it, it's a it's a small track okay that that clay there is a very tricky service and you are in traffic all, the, all time. the time right it's not like willamette where you can get out and have those big long straightaways in the wide sweeping corners and i mean sunset it's a bull ring and it's the definition of bull ring when you pass one car there's another car right there yeah you know and You've got to be on your game. You're pretty much always turning at sunset, aren't you? you? Well, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a short track. They call it a quarter mile, but I'd say the racing groove in the middle is probably a quarter mile. I mean, is that right? It's not a very big track, but man, the action that track provides is, I mean, it is fun. I, you know, I have yet to make it to a race up there. I just can't seem to work it into my schedule. We'll have to send you up there this year before it's. Oh yeah. Have you cover a race for us? Yeah. And, uh, it, it, you have a lot of fun. I mean, it is bump and run. It's it's. I've heard nothing but good about the place, so oh, I, you know, I'm excited to go see it. It's I a great facility. Get it in. Uh, dirt track wise, it's it's a lot like I. You know, what coming from your world, it's a lot like Bristol. Yeah, it's a lot like Martinsville. The you paperclip, know? huh? Yeah, it's not a high speed. It's not a high speed track. I mean, it is, but yeah, it's, it's not typical short track. But it's it's more like a Martinsville where you're 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 in traffic. It's bumping. You're you're, yeah. you're rubbing, and it's going to test you. Sounds like fun to me. Oh, it's great to watch. There's no doubt, uh, especially the street stocks. Yeah, especially the street stocks. But this is not the first time Kyle has won this. Uh, uh, all right, won a hundred lap race at Sunset uh, the year I was there calling races. He he won uh, the hundred lapper in the modifieds. Uh, in a in a borrowed car, uh, very very talented driver. Oh, he on, is without a doubt. It's a big track or a, a short track, a tacky track, a slick track. He he's fun to watch and 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 kudos to the rest of the guys that we mentioned. You know, Langan and Case and oh yeah, I mean all those guys. They're all great racers. I would love to see these guys get up into 
the late model style cars. Because and I'm sure we will. Oh, I, I, there's no doubt. I mean, we've seen Kyle get into or it. I hope we, I hope we do. Anyway, not I'm not sure. But for my love, sake, I'd because love I love the it. late models, well, and I love seeing this new talent coming up. Right. It's great to see more people in the late models, and especially these kids that, that I call them kids because I'm so freaking old. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I love I love watching them. Well, everybody loves the late models, but as a race fan, I don't think you can watch a better class. I mean, that provides the best racing, I would say, is the street stock division. Oh, yeah. My yeah. personal opinion. Yep, you're absolutely uh, right. You get some just real good quality door handle door handle racing, and yeah, we want to give uh, congrats to Kyle Yak on that win. That's a definitely that's a big one. So he's having a stellar year. Another uh, two big races, you know. Uh, Wall banger won it. Jim Smith won hundred. Now wasn't it. Tom telling us something about loading up the bus and heading east? Well, they're they're gonna head back there to. Uh, I want to say he said Missouri. Yeah, I think so. And I might be wrong, but. We'll we'll try to keep everybody updated on when that happens, right? Uh, what the what the stats are on that. So I am dizzy. I am too, man. <laughs> my, my neck's gonna be so sore at the end of the night. There's a good thing I can't see that corner of the track right down there. Yeah, but you know, I'm sitting here just past where the drivers stand, and all I can see is cars airborne coming at us, and it's yep. kind of like, whoa, wait a second. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but. Uh, so last night, Warren, you were at the uh, you were at the wing the winged sprint the winged sprint cars, yeah, yep. at Willamette Speedway. Yeah, what a great show they put on. Let, let's talk about that because the Super Sports were in attendance with them as well, right? Kind of give us a rundown on. Oh, how the night God, went. you're gonna you're gonna fall on my memory. Well, I'm just give us a I, actually. I was I was rundown. I was pretty busy with the with the uh, racing for life cancer donation thing. Um, so I, I I watched some of the racing, but I was in and out of it, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it was a great night racing uh, in the Super Sports. Barley took off to an early lead. Okay. And uh, a few laps in, I think that was a 30-lap race, 25. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the defending, tra- yeah. the defending track the champion defending had, track a, champion had, a, had a run at it, but uh, it, Dan Dival ran away with it. As as always, I mean that. Did he that run away? How seven, big was the margin of victory? Well, it, was it wasn't. It, we had a late caution, so it, it okay. closed him back up. But every time the the green flew, Dival was gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, he 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 was the man in so, the super sports. That's okay. all. There, that's well, really, and he has been the man. He in has class. all let's, season. Yeah, he really yeah. has. Yeah. So let's talk about that because I wasn't there. Um, <laughs> track conditions. Track the track was as good as I've seen it all year long. Okay, so I had a good track. Yep, and you know what I. I I hate to say this because I know I know that there's a lot of effort that goes into that track prep, and, and I'm not trying to put anybody down, but I think those G60s are hurting the track on, well, on, on the big race nights. Let's you know? talk about that because there was no G60s there last night. Absolutely. There wasn't. And the track was? It was all slick. It was perfect. It was beautiful. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, it was. And we've mentioned like I that said, before. as good as I have seen it. There went a body off of one of them. <laughs> we've mentioned that before. We've talked about how you know that's been a lot of the opinion of a lot of the drivers out there that yeah. the G sixties are tearing up uh, some uh, into the corners, specifically on entry. All right, and right. They just dig in. You know that sidewall digs into the track, digs a rut. And, sure. I mean, one guy gets into that and, and tears a chunk out, and then the next guy hits that same groove, and it and it just gets bigger, bigger, bigger. I mean, uh-huh. there's nothing you can do about it right. at that point. Yeah, it's just, yeah. That I don't know that there's any kind of clay that would hold together <laughs> for that, you know. But, but uh, I, you know, I don't know. I, it's, I, I love seeing a nice track. And those guys, the, the sprint guys were just tickled to death with the track. So was the track? I mean, you said it was smooth. That's good. What was the moisture like? Was I, it, did it go dry? It was slick? still. It was still moist. Was when it? We walked out after after everything was over. It, was, it still had moisture down? into it. Mm, yeah. No, I did. I didn't. You know, I really didn't pay that much attention to what okay. what kind of water went down. And I wish I had all this information for you. There's probably a listener out here that could probably be a much more informative than me. Well, let's go to the Swears Truck and Chat Line because someone's already sent us something. Uh, Gray Ferrando. Speed Week, the track was great the last two nights, and it was all G60s. At, at Willamette? At speed, for, the, for the modified Speed Week. Oh, yeah? Which, I mean, is a valid point. There was no moisture in the track whatsoever. The you know the track was fairly slick, which, I mean, for those kind of cars, that's kind of what all those guys want anyway. I don't think it was. I, I don't know if I'd call it dry slick last night. Yeah? I don't. Was it have a little content, a little, little it, moisture? It seemed, yeah. I okay. mean, they were, they were running up in the marbles and. 
and I mean they were running all over. They were running all the grooves. So it was nice. it was it was a cool track. Did you hear any lap times? Did you see, did you hear what? Uh, uh, no, no, okay. no. I, I should have paid well, more attention. Well, no, you were working. But yeah, I was. And, and, you know, Moxie uh, said we'd help out with Steve, and then you were there doing that, and then uh, you know, I just wanted to pick your brain, see what you did see, and. Well, you know what happens when you pick my brain. You don't get very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but I'll admit it. Well, <laughs> you know? I, I, uh, the last show, oh, we got cars upside down everywhere on this track. There goes Phil Vitale. Phil Vitale, he, the man. He looks like some fire in his eyes. He's yeah. just up into the booth here. To, he, he's headed up to the driver's stand. He's going to go whoop some butt. That looks like a 6,500 gigawatt uh Controller, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had his game face on too. You see that? He didn't even smile. Nope. He He's serious as a heart attack. Yeah, I think I think he's got plutonium for power. Doesn't <laughs> yeah. It? I don't think about these cars, but they are fast, man. Uh, you know, the last show we spent a lot of time talking about the Clara Cup. Tonight we're going to spend a lot of time <laughs> talking about the Clara Cup because you know, again, it's one of the races that means means so much to so many. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It does. And, um, I know that with all the racing that went on, there was some great racing last week. If anybody follows me on Facebook, you know, uh, they saw what I posted for me was the highlight of the night was uh, Evelyn in attendance and getting up there and grabbing a quick picture with her and having a quick conversation. And um, it's always good to see Evelyn. It's it just it a always really is. Neat, neat lady. She is. Uh, hasn't changed her appearance in about 25 years. I know. It. You know, I don't remember Evelyn looking any different than she does now. She just. Does not, uh, does not. You know, I worked, I worked out at the track in, in uh, like, 06, 07. I did the lineups when the pits were in the middle. So I I was out there daily working with Claire and getting the old, getting the old trucks running. And I don't know if that's bleeding over onto us or not. So, but, uh, but anyway, Claire and Evelyn, they were, they were like second parents to me. I mean, I grew up out there under the grandstands, yep, if you will. And, yep. and uh I've known him since uh, about 1969. So, um, what wonderful people! You know, I can't that, say enough good about them. That whole them. night, we, we did the pit cruise. You know, we talked. Right. About, there was a lot of cars. We had a good night. Yep, we yep. had a good car count. And um, the whole night started off for me was uh, it was hard. It, <laughs> it was hard to get up there and, and have to read the you know the, the article that I wrote about Claire. I was sitting right next to you and I I, I was wondering if you were going to make it through it. I was wondering if I could even get it started. I know? had to, I had to put on my stone heart and and try to maintain and you know you know how you do that you just It's hard. Yeah. You know when yeah. you're talking about a guy that in in essence was uh you know a hero. I mean truly a hero. Absolutely. And so you know I, I wrote that I wrote that about Claire you know shortly after he passed and and Evelyn got a copy and she she said to me, she says, somebody finally got it right. Yeah. Somebody finally got it right writing about Claire because And for that to come from Evelyn, that's that's oh it was that's way cool. It was huge for me personally, but you know, for um she's right. To write to put somebody like Claire Arnold into words is uh <laughs> It's tough. I've wrote I've written a lot of articles. And that, you're and you're a good writer. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, everybody everybody knows that. Well, we got a car landing right here at the table. <laughs> Holy cow! It was um, where to go. No <laughs> doubt, was one of the hardest articles that I've ever had to write. You know, not just the research that went into it, but to describe Claire Arnold to people that didn't know him or never saw him or met him was, uh, or to make a, it worth the people that did know him. Right. You know, I mean, you, you got a lot of angles there. It was hard. It was uh, yeah, hard. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've read that uh, a couple times now at the Clara Cup and. It doesn't get any easier, you know. I mean, I choke up from the start, and I've got to stop and regather, you know, recoup myself a, a couple different times during that couple minutes. To, and I know for me, it was seeing Evelyn out of the corner of my eye, and having to read that, you know, with uh, Sandy behind me with tears, and she never even met Claire. Right. You know, she's got tears in her eyes, and 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 I got you next to me, and kind of like looking away, trying to put your stone, you know, I'm thinking. Yeah, stone face. But the thing about it too was. After reading that and going out in the bleachers, the people that came up to us that had tears in their eyes still saying, yeah. hey, thank you. Yeah. You know, it was a, a great night uh, in racing to, to honor Claire. And I think it's probably my favorite night of the racing uh, of the season. You it's know? my favorite weekend event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no doubt. It was cool. Yeah, I think mainly because we get to see Evelyn. Well, that's yeah, that's one of the reasons, no and doubt. I, and I tried not to, to pester her. I, I could have spent the whole evening with her if... Uh, 
things would have been different, but, you know, I didn't want to take up all of her time, and, and she was out there respecting her late husband. Uh-huh. Um, 